This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 234, The Fitness Industry, Getting Your Flippy Floppies in the Door, by Roger Lawson of rajlawfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily. This is where I act as your narrator and read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. Today's a different kind of post, all about how to get your foot in the door when it comes to the fitness industry. Before I get to that, I wanna thank Health IQ for sponsoring today's episode. Health IQ is a great way to save on life insurance. Health IQ uses science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health conscious people, essentially people like you. You can learn more and get a free quote at healthiq.com slash daily. That's healthiq.com slash daily. When I first read through the article I'm about to read to you, I liked it so much because this is something that I try and talk to my students about. Meaning, how can we take what we're learning inside the classroom and apply it to success on the job or even finding a job? It feels like academia doesn't always prepare you for getting out into the real world and trying to sell yourself. And as you listen to these episodes, you may be thinking like, wow, I really wanna get into that industry too. I wanna help others. I wanna help others get fit or eat right. How do I even go about that? How would I get started? And that's what I love about this article that I'm about to read. Roger basically outlines that process when it comes to the fitness industry. And let's say you're not even interested in becoming part of this industry. Listening to this would still be helpful because you can understand how and why people get into the industry and knowing the inside track, you'll be able to hopefully talk to personal trainers and say, hey, how did you get into this field? That way you can hopefully bypass those that really don't know what they're talking about and really find the true experts. Oh, and I'm not gonna share with you an inspirational quote because Roger actually included some throughout this article. And so with that, let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. The Fitness Industry, Getting Your Flippy Floppies in the Door by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. So you wanna get into the fitness industry, but you have no background or experience. Well, that does make things a bit more challenging, but by no means is it impossible. As someone who, when initially starting out, had absolutely zero experience in the field, I feel that I have a somewhat different point of view than most people who took the more traditional route as far as getting a foothold is concerned. I'm nowhere near established or successful by any stretch of the imagination, but I hope that by speaking from my experience, I can lend some advice to someone who wants to get involved but is put off by being from a completely different area of study. One, get your learn on. Go to seminars, volunteer, look for an internship in your area. Investing in yourself is the name of the game in this industry. And with the invention of the internet, it has never been easier to do so. With this still being such a relatively young field, if you're not constantly reading and keeping up with what's going on, you'll only continue to hurt yourself by falling behind your peers. The best part about not having any schooling or exercise science background is that it makes your task so very simple. Read everything that you can get your hands on. Many coaches have a resource page on their website that can help point you in the right direction so you don't just start grabbing random books and hoping for the best. Before you start shelling out tons of ducats, check out your local libraries to see if they have any of the books you're interested in. I found that public libraries usually have one or two if you're lucky, but if you're a college student or live in an area surrounded by colleges, The university libraries tend to be a gold mine for this kind of material. The best part is that even if you're not a student, they can't keep you from coming in and reading. Two, soft skills. I honestly believe that soft skills are the most critical piece of the entire puzzle. The fitness industry is a service industry in the truest sense of the word, no matter what your position in it. Even if you never train a soul and your only job is to write or blog about fitness, you still have the responsibility of connecting with your audience and giving them what they want. How can you do that if you're not a people person? I venture to say that these skills are more important than getting your anatomy down pat. Yes, anatomy is important as it's the basis of everything that we do, but what goodwill will that do if you suck at dealing with people and can't convey anything that you've learned? There are enough successful trainers out there that you can piggyback off of knowledge-wise so as to never have to come up with an original thought of your own. Is this optimal? Of course not, but I'm trying to highlight just how vital these skills are to your success. 
you can teach anyone who is willing to learn how to put together a proper training program, but you can't teach someone how to be an outgoing, charismatic person who can get their clients excited about their potential and working towards it. Quote, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Theodore Roosevelt. Three, persistence. It's one thing to say that you want it, but it's another thing entirely to act like it. If you wanna get involved, you're going to have to go out of your way to show just how badly you want it. Think of it from the perspective of a potential employer. Why should they take a risk on someone whose lack of experience could end up being a liability for their company or facility? When I was applying for an internship, I knew that I had to find a way to separate myself from the hordes of other applicants. There was simply no way that I would be able to compete with everyone else based on credentials alone, so I had to step my game up. I got my hair cut, hopped in the car, and made the 13-hour drive from Michigan to Massachusetts for a one-day seminar. Not only did I get to meet the internship staff, but I was able to put a face with my application. I followed up with a thank you card, and I constantly emailed the vice president about the status of the selection process. It wasn't until a month into the actual internship that I found out it was my persistence alone that made them decide to take me on. Nine times out of 10, there is always a way in, regardless of your circumstances. So you just have to be willing to put in the sweat equity and keep searching for ways around the perceived obstacles. And four, professionalism. Some folks seem to think that just because this is an industry based off the premise of sweat, awkward noises, and funky smells, that they don't have to take it seriously. Well, I have two words for you. Womp womp. Those people couldn't be further from the truth. As with all industries, you're only taken as seriously as you take yourself. And it's hard to take you seriously if you show up to a job interview with typical bro attire, sleeveless shirt for the gun show with the entire midsection missing to show off to abs. Seriously though, dress like you have some sense. Also, and while this seems like it should go without saying, I've seen it happen and thus it bears repeating, don't drop F-bombs during the interview. It doesn't make you look cool and only solidifies your tool status. You just listened to the post titled The Fitness Industry, Getting Your Flippy Floppies in the Door by Roger Lawson of rogelawfitness.com. And if this article applied to you, then so will our sponsor for this episode, Health IQ. That's because Health IQ believes that you deserve lower rates on life insurance if you pursue a healthy lifestyle. They use science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health-conscious people, including avid cyclists, runners, vegans, strength trainers, and more. They've researched this and found that if you frequently exercise with intensity, you have a 22% lower cancer risk, a 56% lower heart disease risk, and up to a 34% lower risk of early death. But in general, life insurance companies will increase your price for family history, your BMI, and other attributes, and yet you don't get rewarded for being active you could potentially save a lot of money because Health IQ rewards you with special rates on life insurance for being health conscious. Check it out and get a free quote with our link, healthiq.com slash daily. Again, that's healthiq.com slash daily. And thank you again to Health IQ for sponsoring the show. Something Roger mentioned definitely hit home with me. I realized I needed to get into the fitness industry somehow when before bed, I would be flipping through Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. You know, that ginormous book that's got the silver and black cover with Arnold flexing on the front? I used to flip through that each night before bed, outlining which workout routine I'm gonna try the next day. But there was definitely something I learned personally when I was going through this process. Certifications, getting that certificate that shows that you are a certified personal trainer or whatever is super valuable. Because there's so much misinformation out there, potential employers wanna make sure they're hiring somebody who knows their stuff. And the way to tell kinda quickly whether somebody in fact knows their stuff is if they've passed a certification exam. The gold standard still is getting a certification through the American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM for short. Basically that means if you pass one of their certification exams, you're telling the world, I know my stuff. So something I tell my students is, Go ahead and get those certifications because it's just gonna end up opening the door for you. You won't have to sit there and explain why you think you're an expert. Your certification will tell them so. 
But Roger's also right. A certification's not necessarily enough. You need to understand how to work with people, and that can come with experience. So once you start working with folks, hone your skills, and that'll make you a much, much better trainer. All right, I'll stop talking now. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you tomorrow for a very special episode. So tune in for that, where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.